Welcome back to Military Forces Unleashed. Today, we're diving into the world of the HMAS Hobart Australia's state-of-the-art destroyer. This vessel isn't just a floating fortress, it's a testament to modern naval engineering. Join us as we explore the ins and outs of the Hobart, from its inception to its cutting-edge technology and the challenges faced along the way. Buckle up because this is going to be one heck of a ride. In the early 2000s, the Royal Australian Navy found itself in a bit of a pickle. Their fleet was aging faster than a retired admiral at a veterans reunion, and something had to be done. Enter the Hobart-class destroyer, born out of the Air Warfare Destroyer AWD program. This ambitious initiative, which some might call a bureaucratic nightmare, sought to deliver three cutting-edge warships capable of defending against aerial, surface, and submarine threats. The project, much like a soap opera, was filled with drama, Delays, budget overruns, and technical snafus were the stars of the show. It wasn't until 2017, after numerous twists and turns, that the first of these vessels, HMAS Hobart, finally took to the seas. The commissioning of HMAS Hobart was a classic case of better late than never, showcasing Australia's commitment to modernizing its naval capabilities, albeit with a few gray hairs and a lighter wallet. The development phase was a roller coaster, involving intense political wrangling and shifting alliances, much like a reality TV series but with more at stake than a contestant's dignity. As Australia collaborated with Spain's Navantia for the ship's design, it became a testament to international cooperation. Though not without its fair share of friction and misunderstandings, the Hobart class was designed to be a formidable force capable of multitasking, like a seasoned office worker juggling phone calls and emails with advanced capabilities to counter diverse threats. Throughout its tumultuous development, the HMS Hobart embodied the challenges and triumphs of modern military procurement. Its journey from concept to commissioning was a saga of ambition and perseverance, highlighting both the potential and pitfalls of collaborative defense projects. In the end, the HMS Hobart emerged as a symbol of Australia's naval modernization efforts, ready to sail into the future, albeit with a few battle scars from its birth process. The HMS Hobart's design is a masterclass in versatility and defense, or at least that's what the planners hoped for. Taking a page from the Spanish Alvaro de Bazan class frigate, the Hobart class destroyer was crafted to ensure stability and maneuverability on the high seas. Think of it as a luxury yacht with a PhD in naval warfare. Its hull, an intricate blend of steel and composite materials, was not just about looking good, it reduced the radar cross-section making it harder to spot stealthy, like a ninja in the night. However, this stealthy adversary didn't come together without its fair share of drama. The political debates around its development could rival any parliamentary brawl, as various factions argued over costs and logistics, financial hiccups, more like financial migraines, with budget overruns that would make any accountant break into a cold sweat. Yet, despite these hurdles, the ship emerged as a testament to international defense collaborations, albeit a bit scarred from the journey. The HMS Hobart's design wasn't just about sleek lines and stealth. It was about creating a vessel that could handle anything thrown its way. Its defensive systems are a cocktail of advanced technology designed to counter threats from the air, surface, and underwater. This versatility ensures that the Hobart can be as effective in peacetime operations as in wartime, providing a robust presence wherever it sails. Despite the bumps along the road, the HMAS Hobart stands as a beacon of modern naval engineering, showcasing what can be achieved when nations come together, even if the process is as smooth as a stormy sea. Let's dive into the firepower of the HMAS Hobart. Picture a Mark 45 5-inch gun, perfect for making a statement against surface targets and providing a solid punch and shore bombardment. This isn't just a gun, it's a conversation starter designed to ensure that whatever it's pointed at knows it's in trouble. But the real showstoppers are in the Vertical Launch System, VLS. Imagine a box of tricks containing SM-2 and ESSM missiles for air defense and Tomahawk cruise missiles for land attack. These aren't your average fireworks, they are precision instruments of destruction, ready to deploy at a moment's notice. The ship also carries Harpoon anti-ship missiles, because sometimes you just need to remind other ships who's boss, 
And let's not forget the torpedo launchers, ensuring that threats from below are as manageable as those from above and across the waves. This arsenal makes the HMAS Hobart a floating fortress, capable of handling a variety of combat scenarios with lethal efficiency. However, getting this diverse range of weaponry to play nicely together was a logistical nightmare. Integrating these systems was like herding cats if the cats were stubborn, expensive, and prone to malfunction. The process led to operational delays and, unsurprisingly, cost overruns that would make any defense contractor blush. The financial strain and the technical headaches were significant, but the result is a ship that packs a punch across multiple domains, capable of delivering a balanced response to a wide range of threats. The complexity of the Hobart's arsenal also speaks to the broader challenges of modern naval warfare. It's not just about having the best weapons, it's about ensuring they can work together seamlessly in the heat of battle. This reality underscores the importance of rigorous testing, constant upgrades, and a willingness to adapt, even if it means dealing with more bureaucratic red tape than anyone would like to admit. The HMAS Hobart, with its diverse and potent arsenal, stands as a testament to these ongoing efforts and the relentless pursuit of naval supremacy. The HMAS Hobart is a floating testament to modern naval technology packed with systems that sound like they belong in a sci-fi novel. At the heart of its capabilities is the Aegis Combat System, armed with the ANSP-1DV radar. This radar isn't just a set of eyes. It's a multitasking genius, tracking and targeting threats with precision that would make a sharpshooter jealous. Adding to this technological cocktail is the Australian-made CEFAR radar, which takes surveillance and fire control to the next level. Think of it as having an extra pair of super-sensitive, all-seeing eyes on the lookout. The propulsion system of the Hobart is a marvel in itself, a hybrid of gas turbines and diesel engines. This combination offers the best of both worlds, the raw speed of a gas turbine when you need to dash, and the fuel efficiency of diesel engines for those long, arduous patrols. It's like having a car that can switch from a drag racer to a fuel-sipping hybrid at the push of a button. However, as with any complex machinery, this setup isn't without its quirks. The marriage of these systems, though impressive on paper, has sometimes led to compatibility issues, turning maintenance into a high-stakes game of find the glitch. The reliance on multiple suppliers for these advanced systems has been both a blessing and a curse. On one hand, it brings together the best technologies from around the world, creating a ship that can handle a variety of threats with unmatched finesse. On the other hand, it's like trying to get a United Nations of hardware to work together seamlessly. Each component is excellent in its own right, but making them all play nice together can be a logistical nightmare. Compatibility issues are not just technical annoyances, they can be operational bottlenecks turning what should be a routine mission into a lesson in patience and creative problem solving. Moreover, these advanced systems require a level of maintenance that can strain even the most well-equipped naval crews. It's not just about fixing what breaks, it's about ensuring that everything works perfectly in concert under the harshest conditions. This reality underscores the importance of rigorous training, constant vigilance, and a robust supply chain that can deliver parts and expertise at a moment's notice. The HMS Hobart, with its cutting-edge systems, embodies the future of naval warfare, but it also highlights the complexities and challenges that come with pushing the technological envelope. Despite its formidable capabilities, the HMS Hobart is not without its Achilles heels. The ship's operational costs are astronomical, making it a budgetary black hole. Running this technological marvel is like owning a fleet of luxury cars, impressive but painfully expensive. The complexity of its maintenance requirements doesn't help either. The advanced systems on board need constant attention, and keeping everything in top shape is a logistical challenge that strains both manpower and resources. It's as if the ship demands a team of elite mechanics, always on standby, ready to dive into the labyrinth of wires and circuits at the first sign of trouble. The engine, while a powerhouse in terms of performance, has a knack for keeping the crew on their toes. Reliability issues have cropped up more often than anyone would like to admit, necessitating frequent inspections and repairs. This isn't just a minor inconvenience, it's a significant operational hurdle. Imagine planning a high-stakes mission only to be grounded by an engine hiccup. The constant need for engine maintenance turns every deployment into a cautious balancing act, where speed and reliability are perpetually at odds. Then there's the elephant in the room, the multinational nature of the program. The HMS Hobart is the product of international collaboration, which sounds great in theory. 
combine the best minds and technologies from around the world to create a super ship. In reality, it's more like trying to orchestrate a symphony with musicians who speak different languages and follow different scores. Bureaucratic delays are almost inevitable with red tape wrapping itself around every decision resulting in a frustratingly slow process. The HMS Hobart stands as a formidable force in Australia's naval fleet, representing both the achievements and challenges of modern military procurement. Its advanced systems, including the Aegis Combat System and ANSPY 1DV radar, provide robust tracking and engagement capabilities. The Australian-made CFAR radar further enhances its surveillance, making it critical in regional security. With a diverse arsenal of guns, missiles, and torpedoes, the Hobart is well prepared for various combat scenarios. However, the path to operational readiness has been challenging. Political debates and financial issues complicated its development, highlighting the complexities of international defense collaborations. Integrating advanced systems from multiple suppliers led to compatibility issues, causing operational delays and cost overruns. The propulsion system, despite its benefits, faced reliability problems requiring frequent maintenance. The multinational nature of the program introduced bureaucratic delays, underscoring the difficulties of modern military projects. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to Military Forces Unleashed, and hit the notification bell so you never miss an update. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.